you're saying um, we never lost a battle, but we're still fighting this war. Um, do you, and I, I just came from a, a class taught by Bob Herbert, and he was saying how he was painting this very bleak picture of America, kind of, and essentially saying what we need now to kind of fix America isn't incremental reforms or uh, maybe, n oh, not, not just incremental reforms and not just maybe uh, a, a social entrepreneurship, but a full out social movement like we had in the 60s with the civil rights movement or with the women's movement or the labor movement. What do you, what do you think about that? Do you think that's, what, that's what's needed right now? Do you think that's possible to be created again? I don't even think we have a choice. It's what will be, regardless of what you think, regardless of what I may think or feel. There are, there are inevitabilities on the way that will just roll over you because that's the way history treats it. This problem has been in part of civil cycle forever. I mean, when you talk about capitalism and you talk about free capital and the flow of money and trade and internationalism and all that kind of stuff, a certain group rose up that we now see as the capitalist class or the rich people, and uh, they dominated the economics of our, of our societies. Well, uh, well, one of the earliest uh, glues to the success of that economic process was the exploitation of human beings. And the first major exploitation here in America of human, of human property, of human energy, was what we did to the Native Americans. Europeans came, they conquered, and they needed cheap labor and a workforce, and they conscripted uh, Indians to fall in and on the slave traditions forced them into extinction as a people because they just so cruelly treated them as cheap labor, as, as commodity, mm -hmm. and not with a humanity. And when they ran out of that group and they were extinguished, or at least uh, uh, removed in a, in, a, in, a, in a great totality, uh, they went out and imported the next group of wage earners and, and workers, and that was slavery. And they had a century of that with black people, cheap, no value, no human value, no worth, morally uh, uh, deficient. And when that system played itself out to as much as it could and had to be changed, it then instituted its next set of rules, which are uh, was segregation. And there you had divide and conquer and keep people still in that cheap labor into that useless place of life uh, because the rich determined who you were, and what you were to be called, and how you endured. Now, jump to today. What fascinates me is that uh, in the 20th century, and certainly in the dawning of the 21st century, we saw huge upheavals. We saw the Soviet Union and the communist Russia implode. Now, everybody thought that if that dynasty, if that power were to at all be eradicated, it would be in the midst of bloodshed and tyranny and great tragic forces clashing and nuclear war. But uh, it came and went without a shot being fired. Somebody you can say, well, that's a coincidence to history. Uh, but then you say, OK, let's change the environment. Let's change the scenario. Let's go to a place where the issue is race, not economic oppression, but race. And here in South Africa, you had uh, the largest population of Africans, of black Africans, being exploited by a European minority very cruelly with apartheid. And everybody expected when Africans got free, they would just destroy white people in an act of vengeance. But the truth of the matter is, the society transformed, and not a shot was fired. And people began to find ways in which to integrate and come together, because th those systems no longer worked. They imploded. They died out of their own cholesterol. Then you look at so many other things. And what fascinates me about America is we sit with some sense of arrogance with the fact that there they go, there go those empires, there go those extreme forces, and we're the only ones left. And what's happening? We are imploding. We are in a crisis that is unique to all other crises, at least in our time. Uh, uh, the, the economic collapse we're looking at is because the system just doesn't work. 
and now it has nobody to blame. It's running on its own, on its own, on its own juice, and the more it does, the more it fails. And whether it's what's going on on Wall Street, and whether it's the way in which they have run off with the Treasury, and whether they're making laws and rules that further oppress, you see, I think, that system in a dying stage, in a dying phase. And what's coming in is that force which will replace whatever that system will be replaced with. And hopefully, it'll be the sanity that comes from an active citizenry, people who have a great sense of the common humanity, and will help turn Occupy Wall Street or Occupy New Haven or Occupy whatever, because that's what it is. Now, people can have a, a rather, you know, interesting intercourse with intellectual debate and uh, try to find reason and rhyme and, 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 and contain these things in ways that are not applicable. But the fact is that these things happen. When the Civil Rights Movement came into being, we were considered dirty people, mindless, wasteful, uh, priors, uh, people who suck off the state, you know, all those things. And yet we changed the nation and we changed the value system of the country. Not successfully, not completely, but successfully. And these were the battles that were being fought. The war is still there, and we're coming back now with a new, with a new energy. And that puts a lot of this squarely on your, on your <laughs> plate. Because uh, you mentioned Julian Bond before. He was younger than you when we met and in the movement. Uh, Julian was 20. Uh, John Lewis was 18. Diane Nash, who, who led a lot of SNCC in the movement, was uh, 17 and a half years old with child. And, and they were all on campuses around America and studying and all the things they were doing. But they abandoned that part of their social experience and engaged in the issues of social change. And they did a hell of a job. And uh, now, it, now the ball's on in your court. <laughs> your turn. What do you got from me? <laughs> <laughs>